float. Through here. Runs a float center. Or has run a float center. Fantastic. Last night I was trying to think of a word that would encompass people that made the plunge and started their own business and run a float center. And I was thinking for a while what word would sum it up best. And the word that I think sums it up best is brave. And the reason I say brave is because it's not for the faint-hearted. So I think you all deserve a round of applause for yourselves <laughs> for getting into this business and staying on track with it. I started in 1993, a two-tank float centre in London called Floatworks. This is an era um, pre-internet. Um, we really didn't know what we were doing. There was no float collective. Um, we really learned by all our own mistakes. But we knew we were doing something right. So we opened the two-tank float center, and we used Aquatonics float tanks. They were a local company, and they also had a float center in London on the other side in West London. Typically getting people in float tanks is not the easiest thing to do. Um, we really, really put a lot of effort into it to get people through the door. We were open from 10 till 10 every single day. We had days where we didn't have a single booking in our diary. We were keen to get a third tank at our centre, and at the time we were looking around the globe for any other manufacturers, and we came across the Australian float tank, the Apollo. We worked with this guy for a little while, and um, we wanted to see if we could sell it as a product for the leisure industry. And this is a picture of me and my partner, Tim, exhibiting at the Leisure Industry Week. And even back then, there was a huge amount of interest, but there wasn't a lot of people that were as brave as us. Still looking around for more equipment to sell, <laughs> We went off to Singapore, um, and we dealt with this guy, Gillis Buchan, who was a real character. But the engineering starting to get really good, and um, we sold a few of these tanks. Again, it was a little bit of a logistical nightmare, company in Singapore, time differences, phone calls in those eras weren't easy to make communication. But we sold a few, and we learned a little bit more about float tanks. So in 2000, we had to leave our two tanks, uh, three tank float centre in London Bridge and move around the corner. We moved the float works to a bigger location and we met up with Colin Stanwell Smith from Float Away, who was an engineer getting into the float tank business. And we had the first six float aways at our centre in London Bridge. And um, we opened with six tanks. Six tanks, two members of staff. Now we've got something that looks a little bit more desirable. People showed a little bit more interest and the business was going well. Uh, we added a seventh float tank, a seventh float away. It was challenging. Um, it wasn't quite the optimum thing that we were looking for, but it served a purpose and those tanks were there for the best part of 15 years. The first float tank that I came across that had an engine, a separate filtration unit, was this float tank. It's called the Over, and I first came across the designer and producer of this at the 1997 REST conference. Very interesting gentleman called Jürgen Taprik. Some of you may have met him. A little bio of him, here he is, he's a very established photographer and you may or may not have seen this Johnny Walker advert for the iconic whiskey brand. So Jürgen was our next float tank purchase. This was our eighth float tank at the Floatworks. It's a really, really good product, and I learned a lot from this, and I thought to myself, this is definitely the way to go. It's easier to, easier to operate, easier to maintain, and the customers really liked it. We worked with Jürgen for quite a while and we got the opportunity to buy his design and his business and his manufacturing setup. 
problem with that project was that Jürgen got so emotionally attached to his float tank that in the end he gave us our money back and wouldn't let us buy his business. At this point, we're a little bit stuck, so we designed our own float tank. The isopod. I think this really represents a change in the float tank industry when this came along. It was the first real float tank that ticked all the boxes in size, operation, desirability, but I think most of all what it's given our industry is a perceived value. Yeah? People perceive value when they see this. They wanted to get inside it. and It's given us all an opportunity to put a good price tag on what we do. I know as well as you do that it's a float to float at the end of the day, but when we're trying to get people through the door, that's, it's, it's very helpful. So we had, this was our ninth float tank at our float center, and out of all our members that were floating there from 1993, everybody wanted to float in the isopod. It was constantly booked, constantly booked. I think about 2002, I was thinking about inflatable float tanks for some reason. <laughs> and I always thought, this is something that I wanted to do. Um, I finally got round to doing it probably a few years ago. But this is something that I've worked, worked on for the last few years. Um, and the version that we've got here today is, is pretty on point. Uh, I've been very fortunate to work with the team at Superior to get this to, get this to market and to utilize their filtration system. Uh, if you haven't had the chance to have a look at it, it's a very durable, robust product, and it's something that we've had test, under test at our facility now for the best part of a year. We've also got some interesting domes that go over pools. Again, this sort of thing's very easy to deploy. You can use it on a temporary basis. Um, we've actually had quite a few jobs where we've rented these out um, and again quite a nice aesthetic so fast forward to what we've been doing recently um, myself and the team at Superior were asked to put a float tank into a mobile vehicle um, this is for the use by the tennis player Novak Djokovic on his tour of Europe when he's going around the European tennis tour. Um, key to his success, um, he has this in this truck with a hyperbaric chamber. Um, it doesn't have a shower inside, he's not too bothered about that. And that's, that, that's something that he sort of wields as his secret weapon. So, just to conclude, um, keep doing what you're doing, yeah? I think I've pr probably experienced every possible calamity that could ever happen to you in a float center, and I think that there's such a wonderful group, and there's so much support available nowadays. Just keep what you're doing. I mean, I've had a great life out of it. It's took me on some amazing travels, and I've met some amazing people, and I think it's, we should all be proud to be in this really interesting niche industry, you know? There's a lot of people looking in on us that would love to do what we do. So just remember that, and keep Keep doing your best and keep supporting this industry. And you're all innovators. What more can I say? Thank you very much. Yeah.